I don't know about you, but I'm always shooting in RAW. But the problem is, is that I'm fed up with my external hard drives constantly filling up because of the, of the huge file size of the RAW photos. So here are my external drives one two three external drive and I even have more in my drawer and every year I have to buy a new one I, I hate this so I set out to find a solution for this so I want to shrink the file size of the row photos but have the same editability and same image quality now I'm quite happy to tell you that I think that I have found the solution of course it's not perfect but it does the job so there's a software called Adobe DNG converter luckily it's free and you can download it from Adobe's website what it does is that it converts every kind of raw file into this into the same DNG format so here you can select the source folder Unfortunately, you cannot select individual files. You have to select the whole folder that contains your raw files that you want to convert and then you select the destination where you want your converted DNG files. Now, if you convert the raw files into DNG, the file size will remain the same. So not much is happening here. But here comes the trick. If you go into the change preferences, here's the option use lossy compression. So what it does is that it compresses the raw files in a lossy way. Because by default the raw files are already compressed but they are, they are compressed in a lossless way. This means that they are compressed already by the camera but in a way that there is no information lost. But here you, can, you have the option to use lossy compression and if you click this then you, you have further option. You can tell the software to preserve the pixel count so the dimensions of the photo will remain the same or you can tell the software to resize the photo. So now I'm going to go for preserve pixel count and use lossy compression. Here comes the best part. With this I shrink the raw file size to roughly one third of the original size. Okay, now comes the pixel peeping part. You may be wondering if it's compressed so much, will it have the same image quality? Will it be as good as the original RAW files? Well, here are the test shots. Under the video there will be a link to a blog post and there you will be able to see the pictures in 100% magnification so you can really tell the difference but now I'm going to show it as well in the video. So here's one photo, it's a wide angle photo with a Samyang 14mm lens. It's got a lot of sky. So the sky is perfect because on the sky the compression artifacts really come out. So in this case this is the original RAW file and this is the lossy compressed DNG file. This is at 100% and I don't see much difference. And if I zoom into the picture to 400%, yes, there are some differences. You can see some of those compression posterization artifacts. I think this is still acceptable. Okay, now let's see how the dynamic range of the raw files changes with the lossy compression. So here I have a deliberately underexposed shot from Budapest. I took this with one of my guests uh, Nikon D850. So I deliberately underexposed it because I wanted to see how wide the dynamic range of the Nikon is. So first I added the original RAW file. I increased the exposure by four stops. I tweaked the white balance a bit, the highlights and the vibrance and then I synchronized these settings over to the compressed DNG file. And the thing is that at 100% magnification I cannot really tell the difference between the two photos. It's almost the same. So what's the conclusion? I think you should use this lossy compression if especially if you are just shooting everyday snapshots or your shot is not as super valuable you should use this option. If you like this video you can subscribe below or you can head over to my website iwillbeyourphotoguide.com. See you soon.